Hello and welcome to the latest video from avforums.com. This time we're going to be taking a look at Sony's Android Smart TV platform. You can read the full in-depth review from a link in the description. Now this is the home page which you're greeted with when you turn on the Android TVs. And as you can see right at the top is a search facility. Uh, it's a voice activated search which you use through the one click remote or via the side view app through your uh, tablet or phone. So you just simply click on it, start your search and away you go. So I'm not going to do that now. Uh, at the right below that is the content discovery bar uh, and it brings in content from Google Movies, YouTube, some tutorials from Sony, Google Music. Uh, you can actually set these parameters for, uh, for where the content comes from in the settings, which we'll show you in a moment. Just below that, a selection of featured apps, so some of the big hitters, including iPlayer, and 4K services from both Netflix and Amazon. Seem to be HDR as well. Uh, the Sony Select is a stripped down set of apps that are designed for use with a standard TV remote. Just simple controls. Of course you can also get these in the Google Play Store which is located just underneath the input selections. There is a dedicated input button on the standard remote as well so you can select from a more standard input menu. Google Play so you get a tailored version of Google Play. Let's just take a second to load up. As you can see it's, uh, it's friendly to the control schemes of the Android TVs, TV remotes and game pads. And then you can get all apps or just simply search for what you like. Back onto the home page. So these are all your installed apps. All are here by default apart from the code in ES File Explorer. Now you can see there's quite a big focus on gaming with the Android TVs. Uh, so you can access PlayStation Now, which lets you play PlayStation 3 games through a DualShock 4. So just let this load up quickly, hopefully. As you see it's a rental service. Let me just have a look at the available games. So they're all PS3 or PSN titles. PSN titles are $2.99 for two days and $5.99 for 30 days. Whereas the larger PS3 titles are $4.99 for a couple of days and nearly eight pounds for 30 days. You make your own mind up if that's value. I think that's quite expensive. Yes, I do. See, those are your Google apps. This is your uh, local storage and network video player. And that's your local storage and network music player. Ditto for your pictures. There's an internet browser, a cloud sharing, uh, sorry, a cloud photo storage and sharing service. And you can just use screen mirroring from your Android tablet or phone from there. There's a dedicated section for games. There's a few we've downloaded. Just be aware that uh, storage is fairly limited on these TVs. This one has eight gigabytes. And Asphalt 8 takes 1.5 on its own. So you could soon run out of memory. This is the settings menu. I'll show you some of the smart TV settings in here. This is a few parameters you can set for your TV. Network settings. Google Cast that just tells you the version number, but this is useful. This is the Bluetooth settings area. And this is where you would add a device. As you can see here, we've got paired up with the Amazon Fire Game controller, which worked pretty well, and the Sony One Flip controller. There's some settings for the actual touchpad in here. You can pair it in there, just as cursor speed. Etc. If you happen to have a PS4 and or a DualShock, DualShock 4 controller, this is where you would pair that. Settings for 
input items, power keyboard, USB keyboard, and there's some various personal settings down here. Go back into the home page. Next we'll be taking a look at the discover bar. So the idea with this it's uh, it's supposed to be more convenient when you're watching content in the background. So it brings up all sorts of stuff actually. Uh, so this is your top picks. This is from Digital TV, but it might if you link it up with your Sky or your Virgin or your BT etc. It will bring in content from there. You can add favourite channels, or set keywords. So the first layer is Digital TV, which basically just gives you some channel icons, and you're on digital radio, YouTube, 500px photo app. This is USB home network video pictures, eventually you get down to your Android apps, some featured content, i.e. adverts, and right at the bottom are some settings. Now we think this is a big mistake from Sony, there are far too many layers by default, doesn't make what you wanted to find easy and all in all a bit of a disaster. You can tailor it get rid of some of these categories but by the time you've got 10 layers down we've probably given up so you can show or hide various categories in here and as a lot of them are duplicated on the home page we don't think they're very necessary all in all it's a thumbs down for the discover menu okay so now we're going to take a look at the Sony one flick remote which comes with the Android TVs uh, as you can see it's a stripped down controller, fits in the palm of the hand nice and easily. It has a standby button there, a button to activate the microphone for voice search. You can activate the action menu with that one. You slide up from here, bring up the discovery menu. That's the back button, takes you to the home page. And then you've just got the volume controls and a program skipper plus the NFC tag to use in conjunction with the side view app and your smartphone or tablet. Next we'll take a look at how you actually use the thing. You've seen the one flick remote now so it's just a quick look at how it actually works in operation or doesn't. I must admit I do struggle with it as you're about to see. So there's a quick tutorial in that settings menu I showed you earlier. We'll go on to the first test. So it's a mini game, so you need to move it around. I don't know where it started. Down to two, up to three. So you're just using the scroll pad. It's fairly simple. This is a more advanced test. That's not shouldn't really be a test tutorial or other. As you see, I've failed at the first hurdle. Nope, this is no fun. Back. Again, you can get the content bar up. You scroll up from the bottom, which again I struggle with. This is just a demonstration. Do you see? Try it steadily, make a long slide. And eventually I got it, but it took me three tries and it really shouldn't be taking that. The action menu is just clicky at the top, so that actually works each time. That gives you an idea that the one flick remote isn't quite the easiest to use. And that concludes our look at the Sony Android Smart TV platform, which we think needs some work on the user interface, but just about does enough to win an AV Forums recommended award. You can see more videos at avforums.com forward slash videos. You can also follow us on Twitter. And why not like our Facebook page? Thanks for watching.